Hey what's up guys, Tektine here and I am back again with a brand new video. So, right before I begin this video, first of all, I want to apologize for my lack of uploads. Uh, I haven't uploaded a video in about a week and yeah, that's not a good look for me right now. So definitely uh, consistency is going to be happening much more from now on, so make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel, why not, right? Also watch previous videos too, I mean you're here anyway. Okay, so one other thing. I'm plugging myself like crazy, but stay with me. So follow me on Instagram at techtine15, uh, and yeah, go ahead and like a couple of pictures. Ask if you want me if you want me to follow you back. Go ahead and ask for a follow back, and yeah, go ahead and ask me for a follow back. And also, if you have any questions, DM me there. I'll answer within an hour or two, depending on my situation. So yeah, keep that in mind. Don't go crazy if I don't respond to you within the hour or two. But yeah, okay, so. Other than that, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. So today we're going to be comparing the Samsung Galaxy A20 and the Coolpad Legacy. So I actually got my hands on the Coolpad Legacy Carbon Fiber Edition, um, the fake Carbon Fiber Edition, but the, the color definitely um, looks better and sharper to me than the standard uh, than the standard Coolpad Legacy. So there's that. And we have the Galaxy A20. You know, uh, to me right now, this is my favorite budget phone under $160. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with this comparison. And we're going to start with the design of both of these phones. So let's start with the Galaxy A20. So the A20 has a 6.4 inch uh, 1560 by 720p screen. And it is an OLED display. So nice colors, saturated, bright outdoors. Uh, overall, you know, Samsung knows how to make displays, so this is a really nice display by Samsung. Uh, however, the resolution is kind of low for a phone that is, what, about 80% uh, screen to body ratio. I'd expect the resolution to be a little bit higher. But then again, I mean, you have Apple with their iPhone 11. Um, that's a story for, for another day, though. If you know, you know. Okay. So on the bottom of the phone, you do have USB-C as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and your speaker as well as microphone. So glad that they stuck with the three, stuck and kept the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the back of the phone, you do have a dual camera setup. So you have a 13 megapixel camera as well as a five megapixel wide angle lens, uh, an LED flash as well as a fingerprint sensor. Now the back is kind of shiny and gets fingerprints like crazy. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of it, uh, I'm not a fan of glossy surfaces, but this is nothing that a case cannot really fix. Okay, and on the right hand side you do get your power button as well as your volume up and down, and these are fairly tactile, they're, they're decent buttons, not the best out there, but definitely uh, good enough. Oh, and also the front facing camera is uh, an 8 megapixel front facing camera. Okay. So let's go ahead and put this phone down and talk about the design of the Coolpad Legacy. So the Coolpad Legacy has this 6.36 inch full HD display so it is it does use IPS panel rather than OLED panel but one advantage that this screen has that the A20 doesn't is resolution however the depth of the screen uh, overall definitely looks nicer on the Galaxy A20 yeah but um, it's still I'm not saying that it's a bad display by any means but compared to the A20 the A20 definitely uh, as far as quality goes is better as far as the resolution goes the uh, Coolpad Legacy is your go-to so that's up to you what, what, what you like to me personally uh, I'll, sacrif I'll sacrifice a little bit of resolution for the a20 just because the quality is just that not that nicer but that's just me okay on the bottom you do have your USB-C and a single speaker so they do have kind of two two grill holes for the speaker but only one of them acts as the actual so on the back you do have a dual camera lens so you have a 13 megapixel sensor as well as a 5 megapixel sensor however it's not really as useful as the Galaxy A20 just for the simple fact that the second sensor is only meant there just for portrait mode so no telephoto no wide angle nothing like that and yeah to me the secondary lens is useless because portrait mode is not is not something it's not my cup of tea on phones at least just because they haven't really perfected it just yet even flagships haven't perfected it okay and you do have your led flash as well as your fingerprint sensor and on the right hand side you have you do have your power button as well as your volume down and i do have to say that these buttons are just a little bit more tactile than the a20s and on the front you do have a 13 megapixel camera so yeah okay so let's put these phones down and we talked about the design now let's cover up on specifications so let's start with the coolpad since we started with the a20 in the design so the coolpad has a 
uh, 1.8 gigahertz octa core processor, 3 gigabytes of RAM, as well as a 32 as well as 32 gigabytes of storage and a 3980 milliamp hour battery. So as far as specs go for the Galaxy A20, you do have a Exynos 7880 chip, and you know you have two processors, two cores uh, clocked at 1.6 gigahertz, and six cores clocked at 1.3. 5 gigahertz so yeah and the gpu is the molly g71 um as uh, as far as the coolpad legacy you have a snapdragon chip as well as an adreno uh pro as well as well as a, as well as an adreno chip for gpu now the battery on the uh galaxy a20 is slightly higher at 4000 milliamp hour battery not really that crazy difference only 20 milliamp hours more uh as far as battery life goes though i did find that they're both pretty good uh, they're about the same. I do have, I do have to say that for some uh, I do have to say that the Galaxy A20 was just a little bit better. Not crazy difference though. So yeah. Now let's do a quick day-to-day -day speed test. Now this is not really the deciding factor because I'm only going to be opening up day-to-day -day apps. And if you want to if you want to see more in-depth uh, spec, uh, if, if you want to see more in-depth spe uh, spec reviews, I'll leave them link uh, link below in the description. I did a lot of I did. I did a separate video on the A20 and the Coolpad Legacy for just strictly just performance test where I ran benchmarks and gaming. So go ahead and see those for yourselves and be the judge of that. So as far as day-to-day -day tasks, uh, let's let's make sure that we clear all the apps. Uh, let's see, clear all, clear all, close all. I guess. Okay. So three, two, one. So definitely the Galaxy A20. Uh, let's see the camera. Three, two, one. Okay the galaxy a20 definitely let's do that again let's do that again so let's see the camera three two one okay no so definitely the galaxy a20 uh what else let's do the let's see the messaging app three two one Okay, so it's clear to me that in day-to-day -day tasks and the, just the daily life where you're just making a phone call, texting people, uh, opening up apps, the A20 is definitely the clear winner. Uh, as far as gaming goes, I did kind of compare, I did go back on my videos, uh, I did go back to my videos and compare actual specs. Yeah, the A20 is just slightly faster than the Coolpad Legacy. Maybe that has to do with the op uh, optimization of the processor and the phone. So because the processor is the Exynos chip and that is made by Samsung, so optimization kind of plays a factor in that. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's not drastic to where one is just way over the top and way better than the other so just keep that in mind okay so we talked about specs we talked about design let me cover up quickly oh shoot so let me cover up quickly on the camera and i'll test out the speaker and i'll let you guys go so as far as the cameras go like i said i also did a couple of reviews on the camera for the cool pad and the a20 but the samsung galaxy a20 de uh, definitely is just better at taking pictures and the the pictures just look better in my opinion the colors are a little bit more saturated uh, as far as the coolpad legacy goes it does also take pretty decent pictures just my preference goes to the a20 especially also the the wide angle lens is just much fun it's just so much fun on the simple fact that you can record video in wide angle have this crazy gopro effect also take pictures at wide angle so yeah uh, obviously i'm a more of a fan of the a20's implementation of the camera than i am with the coolpad legacy okay so let me just let you guys listen to the speaker and I'll give you guys my conclusion on the review, on the comparison, I mean. So let's see. All right, so we're gonna start it off with the Galaxy A20, turn it up to the highest volumes, and yeah, three, two, one. Okay, so let's move on to the Coolpad Legacy. Highest volume, three, two, one.
Okay. So I can kind of give you guys my conclusion on the speaker. Not kind of, I can definitely give you my conclusion on the speaker. And here's what I think about them. So the Coolpad Legacy definitely is a little bit tinnier and it does distort quite a bit more than the A20 on the highest volumes. And the bass is just better on the A20. Now this might seem like I'm um, bashing on the uh, Coolpad Legacy. I, I really am not. Uh, I'm actually a fan of the phone. Uh, like I said in my review of the phone that this is definitely a redemption phone for cool pads since they did have a record of having uh, garbage phones. Okay, so here's my final words. If I'm personally going to the store and buy and I only have $160 and these both are about the same price, the $160, you can even find them cheaper. But if I go to the store and I only have to pick one and I only got one choice and so if I go to the store and uh, all these are the only two options, personally, I will go with the A20 uh, for several reasons. I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice resolution for a better quality display. Uh, I feel like media consumption is just better. Um, unless I'm really peeping for pixels, I don't see them. And that's just me. Uh, if you guys have different opinions, leave them in the comments. I'll just send hit me hit me up on instagram you know what i mean and not to say that the coolpad legacy's display is horrible it's actually pretty good for what it's worth also the camera is just better on the a20 uh battery life is about the same specs they're not really drastically different the a20 is a little bit faster on day-to-day -day tasks but yeah that's what that's the phone that i would go with um both pretty good phones it just at this point comes down to a preference and design wise the a20 does look uh, a little bit nicer on the front however the back i do have to give i do have to give it to the cool pad legacy especially this carbon this fake carbon fiber edition uh but yeah so i want to end it here what do you guys think do you enjoy did you enjoy this video if you did leave a thumbs up you already know the deal uh make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't subscribed that really helps me out a lot uh encourages encourages me to create more content for you guys and definitely better content um is definitely gonna come with with just time okay so i want to thank you all so much for watching this one if you enjoy my content like i said leave a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and i will definitely catch you guys in the next video uh thanks so much for watching